Hi, I'm Casey McKinnon and I am not a scroll. The movie version of 30 Days of Night comes out this week, so we thought we'd review the original comic. But first, our indie production of Three Seconds of Night. Thank you. It's been three years since IDW first published 30 Days of Night, a story which made breakout stars of co-creators Steve Niles and Ben Templesmith and revitalized horror comics in general. It's easy to see why, with its simple but brilliant idea, that vampires take advantage of the month-long nights in the Arctic Circle to feast on the residents of an Alaskan town. The story flows smart and smoothly, with Niles supplying great twists and emotional connection to the heroes of the story, the town's married sheriff and deputy. Templesmith's painted art is fantastic. He has a truly unique style that is strange but readable, expressive, and exciting. There are many spin-offs to the series that the creators and others have worked on, with a Templesmith flying solo on a prequel set in Siberia during the Second World War that started this month. We recommend it and the original with four oranges out of five. And if I am elected to mayor of New York, I shall solve this city's energy crisis. <laughs> Who needs sheeple when you can talk to the machines? Ex Machina is the story of Mitchell Hundred, who was the world's first and only superhero with the ability to talk to machines and became mayor of New York City in 2002 for one reason. On 9-11, he stopped the second plane from crashing into the South Tower. Brian K. Vaughan writes the Wildstorm book as a mix of the West Wing, the Rocketeer, and even the X-Files. Mitchell's administration encounters crises like controversial government-funded art, gay marriage, and terrorism. Meanwhile, the story flashes back to Mitchell's superhero days and its consequences to him, his friends, his family, and the entire world. It's very smart and interesting, if you're into politics. But the story arcs all follow the same pattern. A current city in crisis has Mitchell suspecting an old enemy is behind it, only to discover it's unrelated. It's taking a while for the story to go anywhere. Still, the realistic pencils by artist Tony Harris are great and add to the weight of the stories. He even creates a believable superhero getup for the great machine, Mitchell's superhero alter ego. If it sounds interesting, then pick it up. But some readers may find Ex Machina hard to get excited over. We give it three oranges. Hey everyone, meet my cell phone, Sim! Hi everybody! Now like me, Sim thought the Transformers movie was... not that great. It was stupid! Anyway, I can do better than that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I can. In credit change. Chicha, chucha, cha. Oh. oh, she wouldn't have done that if I was an iPhone. Top Shelf publishes The Incredible Change Bots by Jeffrey Brown, which manages to be both a perfect satire and a love song to the Transformers and other 80s cartoons. He hits on all the obvious jokes, like the cliched names and roles of characters, gaping plot holes in their behavior, and how for all the shooting going on, no one manages to hit anything. At the same time, he uses it to jab at modern issues like religious interference in government and science, the energy crisis, and the military-industrial complex. The art is really simple, but by no means awful. It's perfect for the light-hearted and cute nature of the story, making this a fun and easy read that anybody can get into. We are telling you, Incredible Changebots is a better homage to the original Transformers than the long, over-the-top, too-many-humans piece of crap that came out this summer. We give it four oranges. <sighs> well, that's it for this week's show. Go to acomicbookorange.com to submit your own reviews, or leave comments on YouTube, you know, if, if you love me. Oh, Casey doesn't love me, bitch. Let me. So retarded. <laughs>